Welcome to Design Domination, where you'll learn to become a better, more business-savvy designer so you can dominate your competition. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Colleen Grotzer, and in this episode of Design Domination, I've got special guest Melvin Thamby. Stick around to find out how Melvin pursues both graphic design and fine arts, how he got his work to be exhibited, how hearing no led to him achieving one of his dreams, and what advice he has for non-U.S. designers looking to get U.S. clients. Melvin Thamby is creative director of Riversand, a data management company based out of Houston, Texas. He works closely with the marketing and product team. After finishing his Bachelor of Fine Arts in Applied Arts, he entered into the world of branding, user experience, and user interface design. He lives in Houston with his wife, Nimi Melvin, who's a professional artist, and their 11-year-old daughter, Teresa, a budding artist. Welcome to the podcast, Melvin. It's great to have you here. Hi, Golin. Thank you for having me here. First, let's start with a couple of fun questions. <laughs> sure thing. If you want a trip to any place in the world, where would you go? Uh, I would like to go to UK. Uh, there are two reasons, because I can see some good art there. I love art and many of my relatives are there. So, and I never got a chance to go there. So I would go there and wish to visit some countryside places as well. Oh, okay. Any specific cities? Uh, London. And we wish to go to Tata Modern. Uh, that gallery showcases most modern artworks and some legendary artworks. Okay, cool. And... Do you eat the heel of the bread or toss it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult question, but in some cases, uh, I used to go to the end, but in some cases, I'll just toss it. Yeah, I mean, people seem to feel like very strongly one way or the other with that. My husband loves the heel of the bread. <laughs> 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 so your design background includes illustration. Your work is amazing. And also you have branding and UI and UX experience. So did you start out as an illustrator? How, what did you get your start in? So actually, back in India, I studied a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Arlui College of Music and Fine Arts, where I learned applied art, which means, uh, which is a degree for advertisement. But then uh, one of my uncle, Joshi from UK, he gifted me a computer. And from there, I started Googling and figured out, uh, learned a lot of tools like Photoshop and other stuff. Then when I got a job, I slowly transitioned from advertising to IT. Oh, okay. So did is art what brought you to the United States? Uh, not exactly. Uh, I, I was working for a company called Rapid Value. Uh, they have global uh, customers around the world. So they had one requirement here in the US and I got a visa to work here. So based on a project i came came over here and you've worked with some big brands like facebook and ebay and linkedin which is amazing how did you get those opportunities as i told before i was working with a global enterprise company called rapid value and we had customers so uh, facebook and linkedin ebay they were our customer and they had some requirement on their enterprise solution so i worked with the customers and produce some tangible solutions for them. Were those opportunities more graphic design related, more branding and UI and UX? It's more into UI and UX. So uh, it was not a branding project. It was a user experience and user interface design projects. And so now you're at an IT company where you're doing product design, UI and UX, and branding. And of all the skills that you have, if you had to pick one of them, like to do, and you had to get rid of the other ones, which one would you choose? Yeah, that is what I am struggling to figure it out for the last 14 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm very bad in niching down. And I love photography. I love uh, doing art. I love design and in design also. I love branding. I love user experience, uh, UI, product design and everything. So it's a tough question for me to pick one particular uh category and for me it's like it's a way of doing work i get bored very soon so when i work on product design for a while i love to uh, put my hand on branding and try some 
uh, experiences there and when i uh, reach home when i spend my time with my wife and kid i uh, i love to do some artworks so it's kind of mix of all sort of skills whatever i can do from my side well it would it's so use it it's boredom but is it boredom or did you just like switching you know from left to right brain <laughs> i think it's kind of a distraction <laughs> you know, more of a boredom because while working on something if i see something uh, some if some idea got into my head regarding um, branding or art so suddenly uh, i will find some time for it and i will work on it so yeah you're right it's not like boredom <laughs> because i love all these things <laughs> and it's not a work anymore for me yeah cuz i you know i started out in print but also in web at the same time so it's like i always liked going between the two because you know development is just a totally different skill set and different part of your brain that you're using but <laughs> got it yeah well so how did you get into branding so branding which i learned in my college i told you right like i learned applied art which which mainly focus on brand identity and advertising so and i love the part like shaping a business with some design and art skills right so i was very very much interested to that part and i always try to brand whatever things that i have for example i had a design team um, back in india when i was working for rapid value my previous company so we branded our team like rapid gems and make it like a design studio which was not a common thing at that time now every it company has their own in house design studio mm. but back in 2015 or 14 it was not a big thing it was a rare thing so i started out with those kind of activities and we had done some art exhibitions and we had done some many interesting things so yeah that's for, where we do all kind of branding even though i was working in an it company mm interesting oh yeah you just mentioned art shows and exhibitions you've had your own art shown at exhibitions how did you get that opportunity so while working with in an it company i realized um there are a lot of talented people inside it sector but they don't have an opportunity to explore themselves or they don't know how to start so the best thing that we did was we conducted some art camps at our home and some places and my wife is a professional artist so she also helps in conducting these camps and helping this engineering turned artist to do some amazing work and once we had some good stuff of work we conduct an art gallery and they gave some space and we put one art exhibition so uh, it was the first thing in uh, in my place in kerala where all the engineers uh, being an artist and showcasing their artwork and many of the artworks got sold and uh, it was a trend setter at that time mm. and i used to wander with my wife uh, on all our galleries seeing her work and my colleagues work and Uh, so it was not a new thing to me but i thought to give that experience to all sort of people so how many places have you exhibited your work at uh so right now my work it was exhibited in uh, K- uh, kerala in india and uh, i got an opportunity to do a large print wood block uh, it was the first time i was doing that uh, in baltimore uh, so that was done by yeah big ink we were a big fan of that printing studio and they invited uh, us there and we carry the wood block from here and right now it's been exhibited in a uh, gallery i forgot the name but i'll share the gallery name with you how heavy is this wood block <laughs> uh it's like 3 uh, into 5 feet and how much do you think it weighs Uh, I'm not sure about the weight. We had to pay some money while carrying from Houston to Baltimore. Oh my <laughs> uh, goodness. Yeah, yeah. And it was fun like all my friends joined and, and they were also part of that journey and it was very fun to put some ink into it and taking the print from big paper and all. That was a very new thing to us and we really enjoyed. Well, that sounds cool. I haven't done any of that kind of work before. Yeah, it was very new to me as well. Actually, my wife told like, okay, it's been a while you had done something. So I'm planning <laughs> to do this. You can also join. And 
so previously I had done one painting. Uh, it's called Slice of Home, where I portrayed my uh, native place called Palakkad. It's a small village. Uh, it's a small place in Kerala, and I drew all the simple forms, experiences into a canvas, and I translated that into a woodblock as well. Oh wow. Well, you know what I would really like to get into that I haven't done since college, <laughs> which is, you know, like 23 years ago, is sculpture. I made these giant flowers that are like, well, I made them out of a four by four piece of plywood and I cut them with a jigsaw in the shape of a flower. Like one is a sunflower, so it's very spiky and pointy. Um, it's also, you know, you it can really hurt yourself if you don't carry it properly <laughs> when you're moving it. <laughs> um, <laughs> the other one has like five rounded petals on it. And then I stretched canvas over them and then I painted them and I put texture with spackle. Oh, so I put the I put the spackle on first and then I painted it with, you know, the the color like the one is like hot pink and the other one's a sunflower. So therefore it's yellow. And then the center of them. This is so funny, but it's insulating foam. So I remember when I was creating it in college that I used an entire can of insulating foam <laughs> on I think at least on just the sunflower and one of my roommates came in as I was painting it brown, you know, cause it was the center of the sunflower and she came in and she's like, it looks like an elephant, you know, pooped <laughs> on the middle of your, of your canvas. <laughs> I mean, it just, it looks fine, but you know, it just looked funny at the time I was making it. But the, the other one has some insulating foam and then it has like these pliable wires like with epoxy coating on them that come out but uh -huh. i think that would be fun to get back into you know if i ever get time to <laughs> do you ever do any kind of sculpture like that i mean not like flowers on the wall but you know yeah i'm not i don't have that much skill in sculpture but i love sculpture a lot and uh, we were thinking about doing some clay sculpture in our garage because my wife really loves sculpture uh, doing ceramic work as well so we were thinking about it. Oh, so you guys would do ceramic sculpture? Uh, she had done it earlier. Uh, she had tried it and she wanted to explore more. Oh, cool. I did take a ceramics class in college and I did not do so well. I mean, the, I did okay with the course, but I could <laughs> not. I just had some trouble sometimes when I would go to throw the pot and then try to keep it straight up you know and so it wasn't yeah, like know, off yeah. kilter so i actually have <laughs> in my house some of these pieces that i made back then and they're all like you know <laughs> off balance you know kind of slanted in some areas you know it's it's funny <laughs> yeah it needs a lot of patience and it's so much fun right like playing seeing that shaping out into a different form right so right that's the fun part of working on clay or sculpture things yeah well, at least with the clay, you know, if you just keep enough water on it and then you screw up in the middle, you can just... Exactly, yeah. All right, fine. I'm going to get a do-over, you know? Yeah, yeah. And start all over again. <laughs> so who is your favorite artist? Uh, it's a difficult question because I love most of the styles. And uh, it's very... So I like Van Gogh's work because uh, his strokes are too good and it evokes an emotion. And I don't know, I'm... Uh, very much uh, attracted towards his work uh, but i don't carry that style or but i admire his style a lot and uh, yeah i think van gogh is my favorite artist it might be because of his story associated and uh, that might be the reason i don't know <laughs> it's very hard to pick a good artist yeah but I remember the story about the ear. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is gross. I recently watched a movie. Uh, did you watch? Uh, I'm not sure about the name, but it's completely made up of paintings. A lot of paintings. Of his paintings? Yeah, so a lot of artists come together and make the entire film uh, as painting frames. It's not a real, uh, real live thing. So they shoot the live video. And then they convert that into painting. So you can imagine, right? Like, for example, for one moment, how many paintings they need to do. So it was a big project and the movie is fantastic. Wow. I will share the link with you. Yeah. So of all of these skills that you have, what is your must-have tool for each of them? In terms of fine arts, it's just paper and pen. And I used to do acrylic painting as well. 
uh, and mostly I do digital illustrations. So for that, I always rely on iPad and Apple Pencil, and I use a tool called Procreate to uh, draw rough sketches, storyboards, and illustrations. And when it comes to design, I use Sketch a lot, and I use Adobe XD Figma. And for vector graphics, I use Illustrator. And to convert the designs or to transfer the assets to the developers, I use a tool called Zeppelin. And for prototyping, I use InVision. I like InVision. Yeah. And I use Final Cut Pro for uh, editing the video and other stuff. Yeah, I think these are the main tools that I use. And I try my luck on After Effects, but I'm not that professional in it. But uh, I like uh, doing some interaction designs in After Effects. And there is one more tool called Principle, which is much easier for simple, simple animations. Do you ever do anything with Conti crayons or Prismacolors or charcoals? Uh, I have tried uh, charcoal and usually I draw a pen on paper uh, so that I don't need to erase anything and I don't feel like, okay, this is not perfect or anything like that because whatever you've done, that is it. So <laughs> <laughs> I like pen and, uh, and I have done some Indian ink artwork as well. Mostly I use acrylic color. I still have my supplies, actually, <laughs> from <laughs> from college. <laughs> but yeah, I have a bunch of Conti crayons and the Prismacolors. The Prismacolors are like my fave thing because mm. you could blend them with that like white blender marker thing. Yeah, I mean, I just love them. Yeah, you can create realistic pictures using Prismacolors as an amazing medium. Yeah, yeah. If I remember correctly, I think I had to sharpen them with a razor blade or something because you didn't stick them in the pencil sharpener, I don't think, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's a satisfying moment, right? Like <laughs> using your knife and <laughs> sharpening the <laughs> pencil. I don't know. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I remember having to do that. So in my in my little art box toolkit, I had to have a razor in there <laughs> to sharpen the pencils. Yeah. Neither though they were so expensive, you didn't want to, you wouldn't want to stick them in a electric pencil sharpener would take too much off of it <laughs> exactly yeah for anything related to art everything is expensive <laughs> yeah the tools and the materials and the medium yeah people doesn't realize it oh yeah and the mat board yeah <laughs> yeah in college the art supplies killed me i mean it was like that was my like, such a huge expense <laughs> exactly yeah what advice would you give to artists and designers that are in other countries that might be trying to get U.S. clients? Because sometimes I hear from designers who are in other countries and they want to get U.S. clients. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, One of the advice that I can give is they need to directly communicate with the customer. Uh, I mean, the main stakeholder instead of going with an intermediate channel. So if they are confident enough to do that and if they can explain their ideas uh, verbally as well as through presentation that will work out but if they can quantify their work without any explanation then it's going to be a uh, he the customer would simply look him as a graphic designer or a simple designer but if he is able to explain his idea uh, with proper presentation skills then he will become uh, his business partner kind of feel right so and the other thing is the all the uh, creative people, they need to understand the business, uh, not just the outer layer, but how the people respond and how the people use the product. It can be anything. It can be a website. It can be a web app or anything. It's more than our satisfaction. It's it's user satisfaction, how they, how they use it. So that usability part is the uh, main thing that we need to consider and how the designs convert or elevate a business to the next level for that they need to understand the end goals or the uh, future goals of a customer or you need to ask proper questions and convert into high fidelity designs so that's interesting you say go directly to a business owner not going through another channel to get there because for example if i am working for a, a project and if there is a project manager, if there is another person, if he is talking to the customer, he might he might not be the creative person there. 
the client might be giving all his goals his financial expectations uh, he might be talking about his company uh, so that project manager or that particular person is getting the whole picture about that company and when he transfer that idea to a designer he might only grasp 50 percentage of what client told or he might interpret in a different way and he communicate uh, that to a creative person so that is his perspective right so the creative person who is absorbing the uh, requirement is only getting uh, the viewpoint of project manager not the client so whatever he produce the project manager or the second person the intermediate person he needs to approve it and it's his taste and his perspective it might not be client's perspective and when he submit that to the customer he will say like the design is not good <laughs> that is the feedback that you get that. <laughs> because i have gone through this phase several times then i realized it's not the correct way to connect with a client so then i told like i need to connect with the customer and it's uh, it worked out very well so i mean i would normally say yeah you always want to be talking to the decision maker but in this case i thought well maybe it would actually be easier to get an in with a client in another country if you had a connection like maybe an agency who's working you know to help you find work and then they're already working with them or something like that but you're saying it's worked out better for you just to go straight to the business owner yeah that's what most of the creative people think like there is a comfort zone that you can do when if someone is there to introduce you or to get the requirements and so that i can just focus on the requirements and produce the thing but i would say don't go with that comfort zone get ready to fail um, sometimes the client might not like how you speak uh, they might not understand your accent they might not understand your way of thinking but one thing they will understand if we are sincere to our work he will understand our passion and how much we are putting our effort to make his business better if we just showcase that like show our passion towards work and show our interest to help his business then all the customers they love it and they will help us to understand meet their expectation so it's like not working for a customer it's like working with a customer so sometimes the customer is bringing the solution by asking good questions right so we just need to master that technique like how to ask better questions how to present our idea better yes so true yes uh, rather than uh, yeah rather than proving ourselves as an international designer or a highly experienced guy or anything we just need to align the goals with the customer that's it so try for it to the end then you will succeed did you get I don't want to use the word rejected because I don't like that word. It's more of like, it's just not a good fit, you know, but did you, did you get rejected by quite a few companies before you decided to just go straight to the business owner? Yeah, I, I got a lot of rejection. I, I can clearly use that word. I got a lot of rejection, but I would say like, it's a, a different way of opposing some idea. Like for example, if, if a designer is telling in a company like i want to talk to a customer then that design studio or that agency or that company should support him to do that because there lies the business and if the designer fails he need they need to train him or need to mentor him that is what exactly needed instead many companies believe okay the designer doesn't have that communication skill mm -hmm. uh, he is very good good on paper or good on uh, computer but he is not a speaking person so let him do his job let me let the sales team do the speaking job right <laughs> don't do that what i would say like put the design in front of the customer let him sweat let him trouble so that that's completely okay even when i was working uh, with my designers i always push them to that connect directly with the customer and they fear like anything but after one or two interviews or uh, one or two failures they bring a lot of value then the uh, revisions will be very less they understand the business because business owners they will always talk about business right so designers will understand the language of business that is very very important if they don't understand they will stick on with their own perspective of putting things together i mean say, saying like okay i love this font this is the trending font we need to use this it might not be the case if 
if it is a publishing company the readability is the main factor so it doesn't matter whether it's a sleek font or not right so right yeah so that is what designers need to focus and all the i request every company to uh, help the designers to do that connecting with the customers awesome awesome advice now you and your wife nimi offer art classes online which i think is so cool what inspired you all to do that in the first place so uh, two years before i had one product idea where uh, i was thinking like uh, so the all the kids they have they're getting a lot of information on iq and eq schools are teaching it and everything but this creative question cq it's getting backstage right so and even though schools are promoting some art activities that is not enough the kids should interact with uh, highly experienced professionals around the world and they need to learn more stuff like it's not just craft and art right they need to understand design and all those things so i was thinking oh, it might be a cool idea for example people like uh, kusdu or some designers from adobe if they teach kids on design uh, or art so uh, for that if there was an ipad app or something or a web app where uh, these experienced guys will come and they will teach about uh, design thinking for example design thinking and if a 6 year old uh, kid if the, if she needs to create a doll house and uh, she can apply the design thinking there but we need to give it digesting to a kid right the syllabus should be something like that so i i made a prototype and i uh, wrote some article and i approached many people many parents and it got selected to one global uh, design sprint workshop as well so mm. the main feedback that i got was parents are not comfort doing that the number one reason they told was the privacy of kids and they told like if and my suggestion was using zoom or some kind of platform it was two years before okay it's not now <laughs> and uh, people are doing some live sessions virtual uh, teaching kids and all and may, most of the parents they opposed my idea and they told like it's not a, a secure thing and it will uh, affect the privacy and all other things so i had to stop that wait a minute so th- <laughs> that blows my mind so they had privacy concerns because you would be doing art classes online but their kids are already online all the time with their devices i'm sure what's the difference <laughs> yeah that's what i counter with many parents i asked like uh, when you watch netflix do you know what your kid is watching in ipad so <laughs> and you're talking about privacy when i right. uh, when i'm telling like kids should learn from masters so then i had to stop that idea and i didn't proceed with that idea i thought like okay uh, time will come when i need to focus on that and i told my wife we moved at that time to us uh, and i told my wife to start virtual art classes but she was not confident enough to do that because she was an art teacher in india and she was teaching uh, some kids and so we have to rent a place and she was teaching uh, kids uh, so uh, locally and we got like 40 to 60 kids at that time wow. but she was not confident enough to do that then this covid situation comes and then i told her like now is the time at least <laughs> try it and she somehow tried it and i have all the equipments for the virtual art class so i told like why can't you start right now and she started with her existing students and so initially she had like 10 students 20 students and late now she has like 400 students now she is teaching wow yeah uh, at a time she is teaching 100 students per hour and even she got some amazing opportunity uh, with another uh, uh, studio like creative camp where my friend is taking classes and she he invited me me there and she was teaching thousand t- uh, kids at a time wow she is connected to like many parents around the world it's not just us the people from canada uk are also coming their kids are learning and the one thing that i noticed is kids are so focused than a physical class because they know the time and there is no one to distract them and the beautiful part is parents are also being sitting with them so it's very transparent Mm. Uh, earlier it was like we had a studio right so the uh, parents will uh, leave the kids here 
and they will go for shopping or something and after one or two hours they will come back and they will collect the kids so they don't know what is happening they don't know what their kids are learning but now since it's virtual uh, this five year kids and all right five to eight year kids parents will also sit with them and they are also learning all this blending techniques all this uh, shading methods and everything and they love doing it and many parents work with their kids and they uh, showcase the work in our facebook group and in our facebook group it was only eight members earlier now it's like 800 something so wow. it's a close community a private community where all the parents and kids are there they exhibit their work and we conduct some free workshops for parents the reason why we are conducting those free workshops is like uh, we believe like parents are the second teachers uh, the main teachers like for person like nimi she can be a mentor like she can give introduce some materials to kids right or introduce a new art to kids or new way of doing things but the actual teachers is parents if they are sitting with because they only know the kid properly right so uh, they support their kids and they work with their kids and the results are amazing and that is going very well so one of my dream got <laughs> achieved that's awesome so we just started that as a yeah we just started that as a mvp project like trying uh, my product idea in a small way but it's it's going out very well wow what a story and what a way to turn a crazy global situation into a, a huge opportunity not only for yourselves you know as a business opportunity but an opportunity for parents to you know connect more with their kids in the process yeah and this is our mission So where can folks find you? Uh yeah, you can find uh, our classes on nimisart uh, www.nimmysart.com. Right now all the uh, uh enrollment is closed because we uh, plan to do an advanced course for 3 months. It was a risk. We don't know whether people will register for that classes because there it's like a long term, right? Like 3 months they need to book up front. So uh we uh, we tried that and then we got like 400 students and that's our maximum right now because we can only wow. take 100 students at a time uh, and because we didn't take that high level uh, zoom capacity but we are planning to do that later uh, so we had to stop at 400 and so the all the enrollments are closed now and uh, we are planning to do a free workshop so who were who could not attend the classes right so we are planning to do free workshops every month and nimi is uploading some free tutorial videos in our youtube channel too and youtube channel is also nimi sart kids can enjoy some tut- free tutorials there and they can look at our instagram page we used to put some time lapse videos there as well you have stock photos somewhere on splash yeah and it's been widely used by many big brands like adobe uh, trello and other people uh, it's been published in many blogs as well oh that's amazing yeah, but i'm still an amateur photographer <laughs> i'm not a professional guy but i love photography and video well that's really cool you have your hands in lots of different pots yeah whether it's a good idea i don't know but that's what i th- there's a energy that i have <laughs> which makes me to move forward that's it. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. This has been so much fun. Thanks a lot, Kelly. Yeah, it was nice talking to you as well. If you're an InDesign user, join me at the Creative Pro InDesign and Accessibility Summit on November 19th and 20th. Ensuring your documents are accessible is a great idea, and it might also be the law for your clients. This will also help your clients be more inclusive too. I'll be speaking along with six other amazing InDesign accessibility experts. To learn more, go to creativepro.com and use code CPNCG. That's CPN like Creative Pro Network and CG like Colleen Gratzer. And that will get you $100 off your registration. Do you want to get more respect and command higher rates? I can help you go from order taker to expert through mentoring, my free guides, and premium resources such as my brand style guide builder, brand identity builder, and my website accessibility course. You can find out more at creative-boost.com. 
You can also join me and other creatives in the Design Domination Facebook group.